Yeah, come on, come on, don't stop, that's all right. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. So la la ma ra ba 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 ye ra ma to lo mo so ma 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 de o mo do lo bo. Yes, we bless your name. We bless your name. Holy, 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 holy. We worship you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. La maireta, la masoba, la mandara baye. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Remanta, manleta, morra, babata, na maye. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Man, there's nothing better than the presence of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You can sit down for a minute. We'll see how long it lasts. How about that? Oh, my goodness. Well, it's good to be to our, over here, you know, our second home. <laughs> Y'all, we really did ask Jesus to move us to Arizona, and he really did say no, and we didn't appreciate that very much. As it is, you're going to have to come hang out at the beach because you can either fly to Hawaii from here, from Phoenix. That's probably going to be eight hours, long time. Or you can fly for four hours to Pensacola. And did you know that in Hawaii, they're importing that white sand from the Gulf Coast beaches? White sand does not occur in volcanic ash. So you can either come to the source or you can go to the fake beach. It's up to you. And you can pay four times the amount of anything normal for your gas and your food. Or you can come eat shrimp tacos with me on the Gulf Coast. It's just that simple, okay? So um, I've got a feeling. Well, first of all, before I get into the word, Nathan asked you to partner with Fountain Gate and forgot to tell them where to go. Where is it they need to go? Huh? FGMI.org. That's where you go. Now pick up your little phone and do that. But maybe not while I'm preaching. Do it afterward, okay? So that's that. Also, um, Noah, I don't know where you went, but um, I told, are you, is he hiding back there? So I told Malachi that we saw Noah today, and he said, I like that guy. I said, you remember, he's the one that was trying to tell you to tell everybody they were in the flesh. He goes, oh, I remember that. So Malachi says, hi. He's pretty mad that we didn't bring him. So maybe for the conference, we're going to bring the kids. And you've got, no, no, no. So you think you're supposed to cheer. Listen, you've got from now until then to get in whatever state of mind. Because I'm telling you right now, you met Malachi and he behaved pretty well that Sunday morning. But Jeremiah's going in the drum kit with Joe. <laughs> like that's gonna, that is so going to happen. And there's not a lot any of us can do to make it stop. Look out. But. It's always good to be here. We've had some time with the Fountain Gate executive team. I think we've decided to call ourselves a council now because it sounded more like the Jedi. That was kind of cool. Um, we're excited about everything God's doing at Fountain Gate. And it's been really so much fun for us to get to come spend time with our Fountains family. Um, man, we've all been praying and crying and snotting everywhere. Thank you, baby. I like him. Um, and um, it's just been, a, this is a pretty wild week for Vanguard. I'm going to... Uh, get on the plane tomorrow. We're going back and we preach three times in Pensacola and lead worship for Pastor Kilpatrick on Sunday morning. So by Monday, I might have man voice, but it's been so good to stop over in Arizona and hang out. A um, uh, couple things to maybe note. What I'm about to talk to you about tonight, um, it's not really what I wanted to talk about tonight, except the Lord gave me about 14,000 confirmations of the course of this week. So I need to say that I'm not gunning for anybody. Can, can we all, do we have that kind of credibility in this house that you know 
And oh, so that's what happened to them. You might have a couple of aha moments tonight, but I need you to know all of us have been affected by what we're going to talk about tonight. Every one of us. Yes. Amen, Lydia. Thank you. So I don't need you to get all up in your head or in your feelings and think, she's talking about yeah, the other person. I need you to ask the Holy Spirit, is, to what degree has this been messing with me? Okay? Is that okay? Because a lot of times, especially in American church, nothing is our fault. We are infallible. <laughs> nothing is ever our fault. And so when the Holy Spirit comes in a room to start dealing with us and calling us out in love, but calling us through conviction, we, we stop short of actually getting something dealt with and under the blood because we're so busy thinking that's how it affected my cousin. Or that was his problem. I saw what happened to him. You might be right, but I guarantee you it'll go a lot better for you if you deal with the plank hanging out of your eyeball before you worry about the splinter in somebody else's eye. Everybody cool? Okay, that's good, because tonight I'm going to talk about snake voices. In case you're wondering, this is a message for which I have been run out of churches. Um, and that's not a joke that we tell so much as it happened in real life. And um, they kept their $2 offering too. And... and it was very, I knew we weren't going to have a good Sunday in that particular place because, I think it was Sunday, because on the way into the church, the Holy Ghost said, when you pray for people tonight, don't you dare pray in English, just pray in tongues. <laughs> I looked at, that's the only place in the world that that's ever happened to me. I looked at Nathan and I said, well, crap. He said, what? And I said, this ain't going to go real well. <laughs> And I think maybe you want to keep the car cranked because this is not, this is not good. This is not good. So, but this is, we're going to talk tonight about snake voices because if we can get these issues right here resolved in the house of the Lord, it causes us to be poised for revival. Amen. We all want revival. Come on, this is a revival house. This is who we are. Y'all know that I can't change the subject. Every time I talk, I talk about revival. Why? Because it's what happened to me and it's our inheritance. It's a serious part of the DNA of who we all are. It's why we aligned under Fountain Gate. But we can talk about revival until we all turn blue in the face. If we don't deal with this issue, it ain't gonna happen. So I was, I was on YouTube just watching random videos. That's almost never a good idea. And <laughs> quickly, I came across some stupid people. Y'all know stupid people are online. Yes, amen. Don't look at your neighbor. Come on, come on. And it used to be when I was growing up, before the internet was really that much of a thing, stupid people were still in abundance. There's all over the place. But you didn't know what they were doing at their house because live streaming was not a thing. But now, honey, you don't have to wonder what the crazy folk are doing because they will live stream it for you. And so I was watching this random video and it was this chick in Germany. Right away, I felt better because it wasn't the United States. You know? Because the USA, we've got our crazy. We put our crazy right out there up front where everybody can see it. You know what I mean? However, it was just so refreshing that somebody crazy was from a different country. Other than that, we don't have, we've got a lot of them, but we do not have them all. <laughs> Praise God. There's some margin for error, right? So I'm watching this chick. Here's how you know this is not going to be a good story. She sets up a tripod in her bathroom. It's not good, Apostle. <laughs> she sets up. I just want to say, especially, I know, I know that most of this room would never do this. I want to talk to my Gen Z folk right now. There's nothing you do in the bathroom that anyone wants you to set a tripod up for. Not ever. <laughs> do not do it. Resist the devil, okay? <laughs> Nobody cares. Okay. I don't even understand the makeup tutorials. I don't even want to really be bothered with my makeup, so I'm sure not going to sit there and watch you do yours. Like, good grief, I'd rather watch the paint dry on the wall. Anyway, 
she sets his tripod up in her bathroom. She fills the bathtub up with this like luxurious bubble bath. And then she begins to hoist a 12 foot long Amazonian python. Jesus, take the wheel. I mean, a python, 12 feet long. It is bright yellow. The head on that snake, it's like a bowling ball. I said, the devil is a liar. I'm like, no. I mean, what are you doing? She's hoisting this thing up and she's talking to it, which I'm just like, huh. you know, like I don't do snakes, y'all. My granddaddy taught me the only good snake's a, de a dead snake. And even then you don't trust it. I'm sticking with John Moore on this one. He was right. No good snakes. And here we are in Florida. We've got snakes everywhere, man. You don't, it, we were the only people that moved to Florida and tried not to live on a lake. We don't want to be on a body of water. There's 47 gators in it and water moccasins that will chase you at 35 miles an hour. No, 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 no. We want to be away from all that. I saw on Fox where somebody went and walked their dog. In, in, in the greater Orlando area, and a gator ate Fifi. No, 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 I'm good. The wildlife's out of control, no. But can you imagine being so insane that you're hoisting a snake into, I mean, a python, 12 feet long into your bathtub. She's going, oh, you're so cute. Look at you, you're all stinky, your big old stinky butt. Let's get you in this bubble bath. We're gonna get you all fresh and clean. That snake's sitting there. Hissing at her. And I'm just going, what in the world? You are a special kind of stupid. In Georgia, we'd say, you dumber than a 10 pound sack of stupid. I mean, it's code red. I mean, she needs to be taken away. The comments, people are going, lady, do you not get that this thing could jump right out of that tub and, and absolutely take you out? Do you not understand this is dangerous? And she was oblivious and she enjoyed the attention that it brought. I was telling a friend of mine in Georgia the story I just told you. My friend Michelle, we've been friends so long I don't remember meeting her. It's one of those. No memory of meeting her. She grew up at my daddy's church. Michelle said, I heard a story too. And I'm like, what you hear? She said, and I verified this. I looked that up. There was a lady and she had a similar size python and loved this snake. She said it was her baby. I can't. I just don't understand. I'm, I had a cocker spaniel because they don't kill people. Right? Like, what was Lucy going to do? Lick you to death? No. You know, come on. A snake that could, no. No predators, thank you. But she said everything was going fine, but she got really worried about this thing because it stopped eating. And all it wanted to do, I'm going to preach tonight whether y'all like it or not. All it wanted to do was stretch itself out beside her and lay beside her. Get out of that room was the right answer. You win the prize, dude. <laughs> Listen, she takes it to the vet and said, you got to help. You got to help me. My python's sick. And he said, what's the symptom? She told him, he goes, oh, you have to get rid of this snake right now. She said, I can't get rid of it, it's my baby. He said, lady, this is not your baby. This is a predator. It has stopped eating to make room to digest you. It has stretched itself out so it knows how big it needs to get to eat you. Friend, I came to preach in here. You cannot treat a predator like it is a pet because somebody's gonna get hurt. I want us to look in the word of God tonight. We're going to get some snake voices out of here tonight. Come on, somebody. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. This is a pretty wild story. I love this. I love, you know, I think we ought to all get really obsessed with the book. Yes, amen. Really helps when you like the Bible a lot. But this is one of the wildest stories. If you really try to imagine this happening in real life today, it gets really fun really quick. Because this didn't happen in the church house. This was down in like the parking lot of Walmart. Think like that, okay? 
Watch this. Look at verse 16. Chapter 16, verse 16. It says, it happened that as we were going to the place of prayer, a slave girl having a spirit of divination met us. I want everybody in the room. Please mark that in your Bible. I want you to recognize that. A spirit of divination. Some, some of your translations may say fortune telling. It doesn't matter. Divination, fortune telling. A spirit of divination. I, we're going to come back to that in a few minutes. She was bringing her masters much profit by fortune telling. Following after Paul and Silas. So they're out preaching. Are y'all tracking with me right now? Come on, they're preaching in the parking lot of Walmart, whatever. Okay, she interrupts and says, these men are servants, they're bond servants of the most high God who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. Let me just take my time for a minute. Do y'all see that? How many have ever watched a demon manifest? Yes. How many ever heard one be that nice? Lenora did. It is very rare Normally demons start talking and they say everything in the book, but they do not say nice things. Come on, y'all. I got so mad the other night because one slithered over to me in Kansas and slapped me on the leg. I had to wake up that morning of 3.30 and I said, I ain't had enough sleep for this. You're going to knock that off right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> anyway, she got free and praise God, but they're not normally nice. She said, these men are bond servants of the most high God who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. She continued doing this for many days. This is my favorite part. You ready? But Paul was greatly annoyed. I don't even care if you don't like that. Everybody in the room that's got hot sauce in your blood or red in your hair, lift your hands because Paul was greatly annoyed. Hallelujah. And God still let him write a big chunk of the Bible. Come on. Paul was greatly annoyed and turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out at that very moment. Now, the problem that I have with the story we just read is that if somebody came into one of our meetings today and they said something like what that chick said, most of us would never have discerned in the first place that something was not okay. Well, she said something good. I was in that church service too. I had a church service a long, long time ago in a place we shall not talk about right now. It was so precious. And that guy got up and I was at the keyboard and he came talking to me about my family. Spoke to me about my grandfather. Every hair on my body stood up. I felt it. It was a familiar spirit. It, as sure as I, and I didn't even know what that was. I couldn't put vocabulary on it. But what I did say to Jesus was, you better keep this man away from my body because if he tries to put a hand on me, I will throw this keyboard at him because the source was not correct. But most of us in today's Americanized, we'll give Ecuador a break, in Americanized Christianity, I don't know, maybe y'all are cool with it, but in Americanized Christianity, most of us have lost the ability to treat a snake like a snake. Do you know, I thank God for counseling. There is a place for godly counseling. Let me just say this. I want you to give Pastor Tim and Carrie, we're gonna have a protocol for counseling. You can only receive counsel. I'm going to save y'all some time because I love y'all. I'm going to save you some time. You ought not to be able to get counseling unless you can answer yes to three things. Number one, do you read your Bible? Yes. Number two, do you pray? Yes. Number three, do you pay your tithes? Yes. Because if you can't answer yes to praying and reading your Bible, you don't know Jesus, so we can't help you. And if you're not paying your tithes, you're under a curse, and so we can't help you. So we don't need to talk about it for four hours. It's not, it, there's no reason to do that. So I believe in proper counseling and it's appropriate place. I strongly believe in it. We talked about it last night for what, 45 minutes. We talk, we believe in that, but there are some things that you cannot negotiate with. There are some things that you don't need to hold a teddy bear and cry about your mama about. There are some things that you need to have chucked out of you, get off of you. There is a, there's a strong need in the church today to return to the ability to call a snake a snake when I was a little girl I'm fixing to I promise you I'm not even sweating good yet but we're going <laughs> but 
we're going to get there. Come on. When I was a little girl, I grew up, I was trying to explain to Pastor Tim today. I, I grew up in a crack neighborhood. And I remember one afternoon, my brother and I went outside in our backyard. Everybody just saw my hometown on TV last week because of the Masters Golf Tournament. Honey, it's not all rich people wearing Dockers. Okay, that was that part of town. Our part of town, uh, it was special. You can get shot. Come on, somebody. Here's one of those. And I remember me and my brother, I was nine, he was five. We were in the backyard. I don't know, I think we were going to throw a ball around or something. And in the back alley... Behind our house, here came these two men. I know the Lord had to tell us to get down. We hide behind some uh, taller plants in the flower bed. It had to be God that told us to get down. And we watched a crack deal go down, watched the man sample the goods, and had the good sense, nine and five had the good sense to stay down. That had to be the Holy Ghost. And walk back in the house and say, we can't play outside, Mom, because they're doing drugs outside. I thought it was normal. We grew up two blocks from the church. I thought it was normal for drunk people to walk in off the street and come into the church and granddaddy would come on, chunk the devil right off of them, lead them in the sinner's prayer. Before it was over, they'd be saved, they'd be sober, and they'd be speaking in a heavenly language. I thought that was normal. Prostitutes would come take their break in the church because, you know, the pimp is not coming into the church. That's not going to happen. We didn't know that that kind of thing wasn't normal. But there was a generation, it wasn't even a long time ago, that they knew how to call a snake a snake. They knew how to minister deliverance appropriately. Not this new hotshot weirdo stuff that's going on with deliverance. But I'm talking about really come out in Jesus' name. It was real and it had substance to it and it produced life transformation. And now we want to have a talk about it. It's a snake. You see, the objective, I'm on, I'm, when you're dealing with a python, in Florida we deal a lot with rattlesnakes and we deal a lot with water moccasins. But both of those type of snakes come right at you. Yeah. You breach their territory, they're going to strike. They're going to release venom. They kill you through venom. Okay? With well, a python, it's not like that. Why do we care about pythons? Because the spirit of divination in Acts 16, you look it up in the Greek, it says pythos. It's where we got our word python. And a python comes to kill you through a totally different method. Now look, I could do this a lot of different ways, but the best way I know to really demonstrate how a python attacks is to use a little clip from Disney. So can you fellas, can you fellas play my clip? Don't get mad, it's old Disney. It's before they wanted to brainwash you. It's okay. This is like from the 60s, just relax. Just relax, it's okay. There we go. You can believe in me. Trust in me. Just in me, shut your eyes, trust in me, hold still please, you can sleep safe and sound, knowing I am around slip into silent slumber sail on a silver mist slowly and surely your senses will cease to resist you're snoring sorry Trust in me, and just in me, shut your eyes, and trust in me. Wow. 
The python comes through. Are y'all going to be okay? A couple of y'all look like you might need your mommy right now. I don't remember the Jungle Book being that scary. You know, when I see that clip, I get really triggered by the fact that the same guy that voiced Winnie the Pooh then turned into Ka the Snake. That's not right. Come on. You're messing with Winnie the Pooh. When you, when you talk about pythons and the way they attack, it always comes at you a little bit differently. It's not coming full frontal. You know, there are, I'm speaking into this movement for a minute tonight because there's a lot of us who can survive a frontal attack, a direct attack from the enemy. We've done it a lot of times. We've got the scars to prove it, and we survived. God helped us. God gave us the victory, and it's great. But some of y'all don't even know it, but you're snoring. Because you can survive the direct, but the wraparound is a different ball game. I'm trying to... Do y'all want to go home? See, this is why... I'm going to go, I'm just, if you'll work with me tonight, we're going somewhere. What is the number one problem of the Western church? It is a lack of discernment. We don't call the snake a snake. And if you do not have discernment, I promise you, you do have deception. If you get online, you'll find believers weaponizing the word against one another to justify their own pet sin. You know what that is? It's a snake. Do we believe in the room time? I already know the answer. This is not a straight question. Do we believe in this house that we're in the last days? I believe it. Here's the problem. In the final few days of the earthly life of Jesus, tell him I said, hey. Um, in In the final few days of the life of Jesus, the disciples asked him, he starts talking about one of these days you're gonna see the temple destroyed. And they start getting real nervous about that. He said, what will be the signs of the end of the age? What will be the signs of your coming? And Jesus in Matthew 24 gave a big list. Y'all remember that? You don't have to turn there right now. Just be very disturbed by the fact that every one of them is occurring right now. We're waiting on exactly nothing of Matthew 24 to be fulfilled. You can't go a 24-hour news cycle without another war or rumor of war. We sure did get the whole plagues thing. We call it pandemic, but give me a break. Come on, there's a lot of things going on in the earth right now, but Jesus only, we know earthquakes, famines, pestilence, plagues, we know all of that stuff, but Jesus only repeated one of those signs and he repeated it three times. This is, I'm teaching to you what John Kilpatrick taught me. Are you okay? Jesus repeated three times, let no one deceive you. And yet the number one issue in the church right now is the snake, that python of deception has wrapped people up. Can I say this right here? We were talking a little bit about this, me and Jody and Lenore on the way to church tonight. Uh, This is why, please don't hear this from legalism. Hear this from a place of safeguarding yourself. But this right here is why you can't listen to just everything. And I wish I was talking about the world. I'm talking about in the church. You know what? If you want to watch a preacher on YouTube, pick a dead one. They can't can't backslide. Most of these current guys are on the take. Work with me right now. There are some that used to... I feel the Holy Ghost in here. There are some that used to be so powerful. Have a gift. Sure they do but sold their anointing because of millionaires funding their thing now. So they can't say certain things anymore. Oh, I'll never work with him because he's into but, 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 but now they do. Are y'all in here right now? That's a snake voice. I listen to dead people. Come on. Because it's safer that way. Let no one deceive you. I wish we could go 
any length of time in the church world right now, I'd not see believers out watching movies that GD and F-bomb and all the things. I think you're outside your mind. You're begging for the profane to hit your house because you allowed yourself to be entertained by that mess. Well, I just wanted to go to the movies. Look, you can make popcorn in your house. Come on. As I throw water everywhere, come on. Just throwing it everywhere. This is why what we allow, we are, we are, we are hardcore about what we allow in our home. Because the Lord has been speaking to us for years about the assignment on our two little boys. And if 10% of that is true, then I have to guard those little ears like crazy. So they watch Superbook. Come on. <laughs> That's, and the things that they do watch are the old things. Because we're not going to watch, you know, good grief. I had, we're kind of in it now. Y'all okay? Yeah. Had some believers tell me that it was perfectly acceptable for them to watch Encanto. <laughs> told me it was a great movie and that my kids would love it. Did what I do. I looked it up because it's, it's our job. Looked it up. Yeah, not so much because a familiar spirit was living in that house and passing out spiritual gifts to everyone in the family. And you want to know why your kid acts up? You're nuts. You got to let them be young. It's just fantasy. That's what we, come on. You remember when Harry Potter first came out? I'm so off my nose. Everybody cool? And they tried to tell us all that it was fantasy. It was no problem. And I don't know how many movies there were, but several movies in, couple friends of mine, we went to watch one of the clean cartoon movies. We were getting our popcorn and our nachos, praise God, at the concessions thing. And you know how they'll run the advertisements for other things in the, on the screens? I looked up just in time to watch flaming demons fly through the air on a Harry Potter movie. And I said, well, they're not trying to hide it anymore. That's the devil. They're not even trying to act like it's not a devil. But Christians told us, trust in me. Come on. I want you to understand a little bit about this Python thing. Luke, Dr. Luke is the one that was writing down this experience. He is telling you and identifying something very specific that was happening in the Greek world. And when the Lord started dealing with me about this passage, what I did was I went and played in the encyclopedias and the dictionaries for a little bit. So you ready? We're going, we're going to go to nerd school for a few minutes. Went right in to, yeah, get used to it. The <laughs> Fountain Gate has a school. Come on, come on. <laughs> well, hashtag nerd power. Here we go, everybody, okay? The Python Oracle, the spirit of Python, was housed at the city of Delphi in Greece. I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly because I do not speak Greek, but that's as good as it's going to get for somebody from Georgia. <laughs> so what it was was they, the, the spirit lived in the city of Delphi and in the Greek empire before they would start a business, before they would colonize a new area for the Greek empire, they would go and consult this demon spirit for what could only be called a demonically inspired prophetic word. I need you to understand tonight, please hear me, the enemy loves to prophesy. And he knows how to make it sound good. Make it sound convinced. How many, just nobody's going to get in trouble. We're not going to throw the mic around or anything like that. Are y'all ready? How many have ever been prophylied to? Oh, my hand is up. Prophylied to. Man, during the Bay Revival, they all tried that with me. Folk came from all over the place and every one of them had a word. And most of it was that they, I should marry them. <laughs> and I got enough of it one day. This lady thought she knew who I should marry and gave me a, a prophela. And it, it wasn't the day. You know, it just wasn't the day, Carrie. And I felt the red in my hair come right on. 
And I smiled real big. You know, y'all know Lamar at Church of His Presence, the usher. He was standing right there with me. I want y'all to know he about choked right there on the spot. Like he, he goes, <gasps> he starts laughing. I looked at that lady and I said, you know what? Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for thinking about me. But that was not God. She ran as fast as two legs could carry her. Then I got to thinking what I just did. So I went and told Pastor Miss Brenda. And Pastor's like, well, she'll probably turn out to be a fabulous prophet now that you've corrected her. She didn't turn out to be a fabulous prophet. We'll save that story for later. You know, you can cut down the amount of people that prophesy to you by what you're willing to say. Thank you for the, whatever effort you exerted in thinking about me, but that wasn't the Holy Ghost. What if we're too polite? What if we're too American? And we've just been allowing people to slime us without going, you know what? That wasn't it. Because this, prof- this demonically inspired prophetic hub, they had a hub in Delphi. Come on. And they would go and they would, they would hear this spirit spout. I want to talk about how it was for just a minute. This was the Python oracle, the Python spirit. When they'd go to consult this spirit, it usually would manifest through a young teenage girl, a handmaiden. They would make her eat some leaves and stuff. I'm so glad that I need to eat salad, but I don't have to to hear from God. I mean, good grief. We ate pizza last night, glory to God. Walked in, Lenora said, I hope y'all are okay with pizza. And I was like, this is a move, you know. (laughs) I hate that song so bad. I hate it so bad. I wish you'd have it stricken from the record. I've, it's not because the song is bad. It's because I've been in churches that sung it, and it was not a move. Anyway, and one church I hid in the bathroom, but that's another story. But they'd put this little girl, she'd have to chew some leaves, and she'd, they'd put her up on a pedestal. She had to be elevated. Is this working for y'all? The pedestal thing we do in this nation, is this working for y'all? I love honor. I believe in honor. I practice honor. But I don't practice butt kissing. Come on, somebody. I've been in these meetings where these brother wonderfuls and sister Holy Ghost come in and they're so anointed that they can't even carry their own Bible and they're in the green room demanding the special creamer and the select strawberries and if they don't have it, they can't minister. And if, you, if, the, if somebody's phone goes off in the service, they can't preach because they said the Holy Ghost. Please stop acting like the Holy Spirit is temperamental. You're just a diva. That's not anointing. That's being a jerk. I don't think that's rocket science. You're a jerk. I've been, I've been, oh. I have a policy. If you're a jerk in the green room, you're a jerk. So I don't care if you preach on the glory. I don't care what you, I don't, you can say revival until you're purple. I'm not coming to your meeting because you are a jerk. I was in a meeting somewhere, Miss Kathleen. We won't talk about where. Not going to talk about it. Look at that seed. It's the fruit of the spirit right there. We're not going to talk about it. But I was in this meeting and this brother got up. I don't know if he is a brother. Got up and preached allegedly on the glory. And first of all, the scriptural problems were off the charts. Very, very serious spiritual scriptural problems. And some things that were already making me go, hey, not so much. I'm standing there thinking, I hate that my face is on this video right now. I'm playing altar call going, Jesus, rapture, now. You know, like, now's a good time. You know, I'll give you a lift, come on. It was so bad. We walk off the platform at the end of that session. And on the platform, he's talking about the glory. And acting uber anointed. Comes off the platform Finds another, one of the kids that works at the church, just a kid. Y'all's age. Yeah. And he looked at one of those kids and said, you get out there and you sell my product right now. Whoa. Screaming at him. Like, you don't know the glory. You don't come out of the glory and then do that. 
I was, I, there is a level that I get so mad that I cry. Nathan had to take me out. I was done. I had people sit in that meeting and tell me that it was deep revelation. Are you listening? This pedestal thing. So they put this handmaiden on a pedestal so that she could be elevated. Guys, let me tell you, if we continue to kiss the butts of big preachers, we will continue to have hype meetings instead of Holy Ghost meetings. See, hype ain't the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Ghost. You can work yourself up into some kind of emotional experience and there's no substance to it because it's not the Holy Ghost. There are plenty of people that can have vibrant looking meetings, but what you find is that the leader is elevated. It's a pedestal. And every time we've ever done that, I'm just talking about the Americans right now. Apostle Angel is on vacation tonight. The, in the American church, every time we have put... The preachers on pedestals, they have always disastrously fallen. So they would, she would, they put the young lady on the pedestal and she'd begin to give a demonically inspired prophetic word. But watch it now. She would do it without ever moving her lips. And this is where we get our word for ventriloquism. Everybody okay? It was all misdirection. It was all deception smoke and mirrors they showed me today one of the big boys in American Christianity I'm not calling names tonight because I'm in a pretty good mood one of the alleged big boys this last Sunday crucified a woman on the cross and had people dressed in various stages of what really looked like demonic attire and they were twerking It's smoke and mirrors. It looks like a good show. It looks like, don't tell them where it was from. I know you saw it, but don't tell them where it was from. It looks like smoke and mirrors. It looks like the Grammys. How in the world did that introduce anybody to Jesus? It's a snake. Yeah. And this is where we are in American church. I want to talk about how the python kills. I told you I wanted to preach something else. Just... All right, well, Lenore and Carrie are okay, so. <clears throat> Normally, my, my parents would be watching from Georgia, but it's 1137, and the kids nearly burned the house down today, so it's not going to be a thing. I think Jeremiah spoke Klingon to me on the phone this morning, so I just, it's not happening. There's a few different stages to how a python comes to kill you. Rattlesnakes and water moccasins come right at you. But the python kills by applying... I'm trying to help you all in here tonight. I hope you're hearing my heart. The python kills through pressure. The python... Can I say something in here tonight? And you all can fix this if I mess anything up. The Holy Spirit never works through pressure. Come on. He convicts. He draws. He exhorts. He'll correct you. He'll tell you. If you've got a Holy Ghost that don't rebuke you, you don't have one from the Bible. Come on. He'll correct you. Do it in love. But he doesn't work through pressure. That is always a snake. So the first stage of a, of a python attack, it wraps itself around you, just like we saw while you, weren't, while, while you couldn't be in here. We watched a little Disney clip. Yes, yes, I, I see. That was good timing, bro. <laughs> anyway, so... Next time we come, we'll have movie time and pop some popcorn, okay? There's some nachos, come on. Anyway, but it wrapped itself, the python wraps itself around you, just like you saw Ka wrap himself around Mowgli. Wrap himself around and then begins to constrict. And the first thing it does, I looked this up, I studied this for a long time. It was great. Nathan keeps coming up going, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting a download from the Holy Ghost reading the Encyclopedia Britannica. He's like, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> it, 
wraps itself around you, applies pressure, and the first thing it does is it cuts off your circulation. It cuts off the blood flow. Even as, I'm 30, I'm 38, you know? I'm, I'm not old yet, all y'all can shut up, that's right. I'm not old yet, and I'm not young anymore. But even as recently as when I was a kid, it was nothing to come to the house of God and hear somebody take off with, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. We don't talk like that no more. We, we don't talk about, do you know, Sunday morning, it was Easter Sunday, a church of his presence. I sang Andre Crouch. The blood will never lose this. It reaches to the highest mount. How do you have Easter without Andre? Somebody said, I haven't heard that song in years. And I'm going, why not? When we experience shame because of the preaching of the blood of Jesus, please believe me when I tell you, you're getting wrapped up in a python. That's a spirit of divination. That is deception. When it tries to stop, well, we can't say it that way because people won't understand. I do not personally have all the understanding of why it takes it that way. I couldn't give you, I'm not some brilliant theologian, but I know what I was like before the blood hit my life. I remember what it was like to be bound in fear. I remember shaking and hiding behind a pew in my daddy's church and saying, God, I know you got your hand on me, but I'm never going to be able to do this. And then the blood hit my life and fear came up off of me. And I got up leading worship. I got up prophesying. I got up preaching. I know it was the blood for me. And the moment we try to be God's press secretary and package the message of the blood in a trendy way. God didn't call you to be relevant. He called us to be holy. We're not here to blend in with the culture. We're here to provoke the culture. First stage of a python attack cuts off your circulation. I'm trying to hurry. Is this okay? I'm sweating real good now. Praise God. I'm in Arizona. We are the bacon. We're in a hot skillet. We are the bacon. You know, I've been coming here since 2014. We still don't have that on a shirt. Nathan, be activated. I like this Fountain Gate shirt, but it needs a strip of bacon right on it. You know what I mean? Crispy. Come on. I mean, it's hot in Florida, but it ain't like this. This is not the same. It's a dry heat. It doesn't matter. That one year I was here and it's 122. Dry heat, wet heat. We're in hell. Come on. Come out here to do worship. They got the turbine fan. And when that didn't work, I was like, this is really bad. <laughs> like, this is not good at all. Are, are you okay with me right now? Second stage, first stage cuts off your circulation, cuts off the blood flow. The second phase is it increases the pressure. How many could say you've been under an attack where the enemy has been applying and increasing pressure? Yeah. See, and that's why the Lord changes messages on folk. <laughs> that right there. The second stage is it increases that pressure and cuts off your airflow. You lose your breath. You know, in Hebrew, the Holy Spirit is called the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Breath of God. I, when we were kids, there were people that didn't like the Holy Ghost. And if you didn't like the Holy Ghost, you could go to one of those not-so-Holy Ghost churches and be perfectly fine. And they pretty well left us alone, and we pretty well left them alone. And that was a decent arrangement. At least we was all being nice. But now, we are living in what I call the, the rise of the pinos. Pentecostal in name only. You think that it's a type of music. You think it's a style of preaching. All those Pentecostals that just get a little worked up. You don't even know what you're talking about. We have within the so-called Pentecostal movement, just recently, not a, not a long time ago, a couple months ago, we get a call from a pastor friend of ours who got fired 
from his state leadership in his denomination because he wanted revival. Come on. Do y'all remember uh, Aubrey and Alex that came out here and got ordained at Fountain Gate? You know why I sent them out here? They didn't tell y'all a lot of stuff. Let me tell you why I sent them out here. They got fired for saying that there is more of God and you should want him. From a church. So the Lord called them to Plant City, Florida. They started a church. We might have to take this thing off the internet later. I don't know, man. It <laughs> just, just occurred to me that I was talking about that on a microphone and that the internet is probably active. Jesus, help us. I'm sorry, I'll bring now. <laughs> anyway, called them to start a church. Now, their church is small, but it, you better believe me when I tell you, it is not a pino church. It, it, it's fiery from go. Everybody knows when you walk in there, that's a fire church. Yeah, and I don't have to prove that because Alex personally did laps in this meeting, in this church. <laughs> Michelle texted me. I can't even remember where we were. We were somewhere preaching. She said, we really love these guys. The ordination is going great. And Alex is taking laps around the sanctuary. <laughs> I said, I didn't send y'all no pinos, okay? Come on. We don't, indul- we don't ordain pinos at Fountain Gate. Come on. You better believe that when we begin, especially in the so-called Pentecostal movie movement, when we begin to try to mansplain the Holy Spirit, when we begin to try to help people, I don't personally get why talking in another language from another world does what it does. I build myself up in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. How does that work? I have no idea. Also, I believe it. I don't have to explain it. I don't have to understand. You can tell these people who are coming under this snake attack of the cutting off of the breath of God. You can tell who they are because when God begins to move in these meetings, they're the ones who get antsy. They hadn't sat with him. So God moving for more than five minutes or so. Come on. I sat with a worship team in a church they could not pray for two minutes two minutes I couldn't pray I'm not working anybody over I'm trying to help you what's that that was deception don't you worry about it God dealt with it real good they can pray now come on come on you know what happened somebody had to get aggressive with the snake and it's rampant in our churches I don't know if y'all are still having fun but see this is why Paul wasn't nice to that spirit Paul didn't respond in a seeker sensitive way shut up and come out we're not going to talk about it and you're not going to puke on my shoes come on but, but you coming out and you're going you gonna to shut up we could talk all night about even what happened for that because he literally was thrown in jail for getting that little girl free But Paul behaved aggressively toward deception. We propagate deception. The difference between the American church and the apostle Paul. See? It's because discernment has left the building. One of the main things we cry out for, and I'm not just talking about at Vanguard, I'm talking about me and Nathan at our house. Or in hotel rooms is the case, maybe. We're kind of semi-homeless right now. Don't ask. (laughs) It's just complicated. We're doing our dead level best to get to the Gulf Coast. And apparently we're taking the scenic route. But we're going to get there whether the devil likes it or not. (laughs) I'm just, that's just how it goes. Baby, that reminds me. In a little bit, I'm going to need my gavel out of my backpack. So we'll we'll talk about it in a minute. Sometimes I bring, (laughs) sometimes I bring things to church with me. Could be worse. I could have brought my sword. Just thank God it's a gavel, okay? So, because that was a real possibility, but they won't let you put that on the airplane. But it's a shame, really. It's one of those Narnian ones. It's Aslan right on it. Come on. It's the coolest ever. Anyway. But here's the thing. When we're on our own and we're asking God to do things for our family, for the ministry God entrusted to us, we routinely say, God, please give us discernment. Pastor Kilpatrick makes everybody every week say, uh, God is opening the eyes 
of our understanding. I'm up there. You know, I feel like we should dance when we do it or something, you know? God, open my eyes. And he always says partial errors, you know, errors and partial truths are giving way to fresh revelation. Yes, I want God to do that to me. In 2008-ish, so there was no Bay Revival and I did not know Nathan. I wasn't dating anybody. Uh, I had nearly married the wrong guy in 2006, so I told the Lord that he's going to need to hit me over the head pretty good when the right guy came along. And as you can see, it worked. So just relax, it's okay. But I was at my house in Daphne, Alabama, and uh, Paula was living with me at the time. This was before she got married, and she was dating Mark, and I harassed her a lot. But anyway, we were, we were, I was asleep that morning, and the Lord woke me out of a sound sleep and said, your first son will be Malachi David. I'm like, what? God graciously said, your first son will be Malachi David. And I'm like, well, that's cute, but you done forgot something. <laughs> and I'm not marrying no Alabama redneck. You know, none of these, it's, not, it's not happening. I do not roll with the tide. Come on, y'all. This is not working. I don't want to marry Bubba. That's not my deal. Not my style. Thank you very much. God bless Bubba. Bubba's not my style. And the Lord said, nevertheless, your first son will be Malachi David. And the Lord took me to this scripture right here. It's a bedrock scripture in our lives. Malachi chapter 3. Now, Malachi 4 is where the prophet Malachi says that there is coming a revival in the last days where the hearts of the fathers turn to the sons and the sons to the fathers. Y'all remember that? How many of you know we really need that? Most of these shootings that we've seen in the United States have happened at the hands of fatherless sons. We need this revival. But before you get to the prophetic word about that revival, Malachi 3.18 says this, you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not. If you want that revival, you must have this discernment. And it's the number one thing people in the church don't have. Somebody falls in American church, falls into sin, falls into immorality. Wow! How did we not see this? You saw the warning signs. You saw them. We did. We saw them. But we let our emotions, our sentimentality, cloud our, what we were hearing from the Holy Spirit. And that snake just wrapped itself right around you. I'm going to talk a minute. There's a couple kids in the room. I get that, so I'm going to be careful. Slightly want to apologize because I'm fixing to ruin Samson forever. So. I want to talk about Samson. And I have to say that I have to be careful with kids in the room because, dude, have you read the book of Judges? Because that thing is extra. <laughs> so, it is not okay, man. You read the book of Judges, you can cancel Netflix, Prime Video, everything, because it is, wow. And it is not rated G, right? Samson is a guy who before he was born, God called him, consecrated him. His parents had been barren. The angel of the Lord shows up and says, nine months from now, guess what? And your son's going to be called into a Nazarite vow. We can't talk about that a lot tonight. I don't, I've got to get out of this. We've got to go home sometime. But the Nazarite vow was a vow of extreme consecration. He was never, ever to drink wine or even grapes. He was never, ever to do anything like that. He was never, ever allowed to cut his hair. And in that culture, this was going to be the sign of the extreme holiness that he had committed unto God. The Bible tells us that Samson had seven braids of hair. You know, I don't like it when a man has prettier hair than me. <laughs> Worked out in our case. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do that. <laughs> Y'all know that was funny. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I am not the reason his hair fell out. I know what made the hair. No, I know what made your hair fall out, but we're not going to say it on a microphone because we're having a good night. Come on. <laughs> However, I do tell him routinely that if he talks back to me, I'm going to snatch the rest of the hair out of his head. So there is that. But 
Samson, God raised him up and God was using his life to defeat the Philistines. The Philistines had been oppressing Israel. God raises up Samson and he is on their number one most wanted list. He's engaging in acts of domestic terrorism against the Philistines. It's an agricultural society. He is setting fields on fire. It's, a, it's like he blew up the capital. This guy, is a, he is there, Osama bin Laden. I'm telling you, him and Malachi are going to be, him and Jeremiah, him and Jeremiah are going to be just like that. You just wait and watch what I'm saying because neither one of them are anything like appropriate. It's wonderful. I love you, dude. Not in the realms of appropriate. I love it. <laughs> you can change your name to Marrow. It's okay. Anyway, <laughs> now Samson, when we talk about Samson in church, we, it's important to understand a few things. For one thing, when I say Samson, y'all probably thinking some kind of a not green version of the Incredible Hulk. I do not believe that at all. Because if the guy walks in the room and he is 400 pounds and ripped, why is anyone asking what the secret of his strength is? If he looks, come on, if he's 400 pounds and he's ripped, the secret of his strength is not a mystery. It is steroids. He's juicing. Come on, y'all. Y'all remember in the 90s when all those guys broke all the baseball records and we all tried to act like we didn't know that they were on steroids? I wish we could find evangelists in the United States that didn't think they needed to use steroids to preach the gospel, but that's another story for another day. Work with me, work with me. If Samson, I don't, God help us. We got to take this down. This is getting bad. Danger, Will Robinson. This is getting bad. This is what happens when I eat pizza too late, man. Anyway, listen. Samson, if he's 400 pounds and ripped, there's no mystery. But if he looks like Barney Fife, come on, with dreadlocks. Okay, my generation, Steve Urkel. Come on, come on, come on. For y'all, Sheldon. If he looks like that, about 90 pounds soaking wet with dreadlocks. If that guy takes the jawbone of a donkey and opens up a can of whoop butt on a thousand trained warriors, then everybody is going to say, what is the secret of that guy? How did he do that? And God would come upon him. All of y'all just worried that I'm just being weird with this scripture. I'd like to point out that you can't find me a place in Judges where Samson exercised strength apart from this phrase. The spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. I think he looked like Barney. If you're in the UK, it'd be Mr. Bean. Come on. I'm just saying. And God was using his life, but here's the problem with Samson, and we've got this problem in America, all over America. Samson had a call. Samson had a gift. God would come upon him, and this gift would flow. But Samson had a problem. If you kids in the room, I'm going to say it nice. Y'all okay? Samson had trouble knowing which bed to sleep in. Keeping them britches up. Come on, somebody. And he thought that because the gift was still being exercised, that God approved his personal life. Am I still ordained? Am I okay? Okay, okay. I'm just checking. I like to check from time to time anyway. It was time to check again, so it's okay. <laughs> the thing is, Samson, God had said, you don't marry outside the covenant of Israel with Yahweh. Is God racist? No. He said, people can come into the congregation of Israel if they're willing to come into the covenant with Yahweh. But if they're not, you don't marry them. Why did he say that? Because he said, they will win your heart toward their God and seduce you away. Samson, the first thing he does, you can read it later. If you read the story of Samson in your Bible, you will well and truly have just read something that was not rated G. But Samson saw a Philistine woman. Y'all, he looked at her and said, she looked good. 
and told his daddy, I want her. They didn't even go bowling or nothing. That's, that was it. I want that one. She looks good. How many know this wasn't at all a covenant mindset? Y'all, I'm talking to the young folk right now because everything that looked good ain't covenant material. And, and, and I don't care how cute he is. I don't care how gorgeous she is. You better know. You better know. You might be dealing with one of these morons. And, and it's real hard to get loose of it once you've gotten in with it. Simplemente, boom. Ask us later. <laughs> so Samson, when his first marriage imploded upon him, he began, he began to say, I'm not going to even bother with marriage anymore. I'm just going to sleep with who I want to sleep with. I know y'all thought that was 2023, but it was also in his day. So he just went wherever he wanted to. And that's how he ends up in Delilah's bed. I'm not quite done, but I'm working, you know, come on, work with me. I know I'm taking my time a little bit on a Wednesday night. I came to try to help us, okay? Y'all know the story. Samson is with Delilah for one reason, and it's not holy. Thank you, everybody. She cute. That's it. Delilah's with Samson, not because she thinks he's cute, because how many knows that Sheldon with dreadlocks is not a good look? She's there. You can read the scripture. The five lords of the Philistines said, if you get his secret out of him, if you find out the secret of his strength, you're going to win the lottery, chick. They were each going to give her 500 shekels. I mean, it was big money in their, in their day. She was going to hit the lottery if she sold him out. Night one, he's in the bed with this woman, and she said, tell me the secret of your strength. I give him night one. He doesn't know who she is yet. He tells her some stupid lie. If you weave my hair in a loom, I'll lose all my strength. So Samson goes to sleep. And she did exactly what he said. I said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. The Bible says he shook himself. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he whooped those guys. Now don't you think that at that juncture... Don't you think we're going to talk about this? Hi, you're trying to kill me. Don't you think we're going to try to... Night two, he's back in her bed. He had no idea. He's not at stage one where the blood flow's getting cut off. He's not where the breath's getting cut off. This dude is about to get crushed. That's the third stage of the python. It crushes your bone structure to make you easier to digest. Samson was so messed up and he didn't even know it. You know the story. Finally, she says, she starts working him over. You don't love me. Well, yeah, you knew that. You don't love me either. Come on. They both knew why they were there. Nobody's confused anymore. But he's still showing up. That's what deception looks like. And he, she finally just kept bugging the daylights out of him until he said, I'm in a Nazarite vow from birth. Never has a razor ever touched my hair. If you cut my hair, I'll lose all my strength. By the way, that's the other way you know that it was supernatural strength. I've never had a haircut make me weak. It wasn't about the hair. He breached the covenant. I will never understand that level of deception. He knows he told her the real truth. And the Bible says he laid down in her lap and went to sleep. Welcome to the American church. It's not just that we're asleep. We're not innocently asleep. Sleeping like Samson in the wrong bed. You know what happened? She cut his hair. Give him his first haircut. And the Bible says that she began to torture him first to verify that he lost his strength. Then she said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And the saddest, some of the saddest words of scripture you're ever going to read, he stood up and shook himself and thought to himself, I'll do as I've done before. And he did not know that the spirit of the Lord had left him. 
Now, at this moment, I gave you all of that to give you this. Y'all still hanging in or y'all bored? Okay. The Philistines rush in and I'm over here going, it says in Judges 16, 21, the Philistines seized Samson and gouged out his eyes. They made him a slave, gouged out his eyes and made him grind grain. I don't understand. Because when SEAL Team 6 went in for Osama bin Laden, how many know they didn't care about his eyeballs? Come on. Who cares what his vision is like? Just kill him. Why? The Philistines have their number one enemy. Why don't they kill him? And then I realized what it was. The enemy, the Philistines knew what Samson had forgotten. They weren't after his strength. They knew he didn't have any. None of his own. They weren't after his strength. They were after his sight. If you can't see, the devil considers you as good as or better than dead. Because the Bible still says without vision, the people perish. It's the same thing to hell. If he can keep you, he doesn't mind you punching your God card. Doesn't mind you coming to all the meetings. Doesn't mind. Does, everybody else might not know that there's no reality of God in your life. You might be able to pull it off, but if you can't see, hell looks at you as if you're as good as dead. It's not after your strength, it's after your sight. That's why the pressure's been that intense. Are you in here? That's why we gotta cry out for discernment. Because the devil, you have to understand, we focus so much on the fact that the devil is a liar, but did you know he tells the truth sometimes? He only tells the truth to make a lie bigger. It's why you have had people weaponize the Bible at you. It's not that the Bible is not true. It's that the enemy is weaponizing it to make a lie bigger. Because what you find out is what they really wanted to do was feel good about drinking. Is anybody in here? Come on, come on. We have to cry out for real discernment. Because Samson wasn't special and neither are we. Amen, amen. That's good preaching, Lydia. I preach myself happy. You can't mess with me. They already bought me my tacos. I'm good. <laughs> deception never sounds like deception. It never sounds like a lie. It never sounds like a lie. It sounds like the most reasonable thing in the world. It slithers up beside you. It sounds like, I know you're lonely and I know you really want somebody and you've been single all this time and I know that guy's not where he needs to be with the Lord, but you can get him there. Sounds good, doesn't it? And it took out a young lady from my parents' church. She's fixing to marry the wrong guy. This weekend, I believe it is. He's not saved, but he's just such a nice guy. And he's willing to go to church with me. It sounds like, can we, be, can we get, talk about the church folk for just a minute? Don't look at your neighbor right now or it's going to get weird, okay? Okay. No. You're not gossiping. You just, yeah, uh-oh. You just are sharing with friends who will pray so that they can pray more informed. Come on, somebody. Oh, if y'all like that one, you're going to love this one. I don't like the direction of this church right now. So I'm just going to withhold my tithe. Money's been so tight. I just, I'm going to, thank you, Jody. Go ahead, Jody. He's going to fall out right now. Come on. <laughs> I love it. Can I say something in the room right now? If you do not worship God with your money, you don't worship him with your mouth either. Because your checkbook, your bank statement, your Google search history, your social media likes, 
that tells me who you really worship. It's a snake voice. Now, I know the new popular thing is to say that tithing is Old Testament. That's cute until you realize it's not under the law. Abraham paid tithes. Shut up. You need to read the whole book. We get to pay tithes. <laughs> You don't want to talk to me and Nathan about that because when we didn't have any idea where the next paycheck was coming from when we jumped off the cliff to start Vanguard Ministries, we didn't know what was going to happen and we have a mortgage and two children who like to eat and we still paid tithe off of every dime and it doesn't make mathematical sense but we were never one time short. We, I can tell you that all my life I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. You don't need to talk to me about no tithe. But if you're the one that owns your money, I'm not even sure if you're saved. You ain't got to give it to me. Are y'all okay? You ain't got to give it to me. I'm not your storehouse. But if you're the one that owns your money, I don't even know. If, God, if your money owns you, Jesus doesn't. Do y'all see how deception can sound? Every one of the statements I just gave you had a little kernel of truth in there, but a lot of distortion all around it. Do you see how that works? I'm not going to keep going with that. We've got to, you know, at some point bring the plane in for a landing. How do, I, how do I avoid deception? Remember that part where I said we need to fall in love with the book? It turns out Jesus made it very clear that we have got to, in these last days, we've got to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you know the real voice of the Holy Spirit, and the best way is this book, come on. If you know the voice of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be deceived by error. It's not going to happen. Uh, can we do kind of a, can we talk about the Holy Spirit for just a minute? Where is the Holy Spirit in a service? Where was the Holy Spirit the strongest tonight? As far as I'm concerned, it was Pastor Tim screaming, magnify the Lord. You know, me and Willie, we had a go, but Tim wins the day. Come on. Why? Because the real Holy Spirit, you can always find the Holy Spirit behind whatever is screaming, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Holy Spirit does not come to endorse our ministry or our movement. The Holy Spirit does not come to show approval to our style of delivery method. The Holy Spirit only ever comes to magnify Jesus Christ. He will always make him obvious. So if it magnifies me and how I feel, if it magnifies me and what I need to receive, there might be a snake up in that. But if it points directly to Jesus with no qualifiers on it, that's the Holy Ghost. Not me drawing attention to myself. Come on. Y'all want a granddaddy story? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've told y'all this one before. This is the best. This is, you'd have loved my granddaddy. He's a piece of work. So there's a crazy lady at our church in Augusta. We do, I told you that some of them are in other countries, but we sure had more than our fair share in Augusta. And her name was Trudy. She gets up. This was right in the charismatic movement when everybody was really, really, the Lord was bringing tongues and interpretation out a lot more. It was a lot of display. God was just, there was a moment. God's calling attention to that particular gift. So Trudy decided she was going to give a message in tongues and interpretation. That's absolutely not the way that works, by the way. You don't decide to do that. That is not a thing, so don't do that. I'm just, I'm not saying Trudy did it right. I'm saying she did it 100% wrong. That don't mean it wasn't funny. Come on, come on, come on. So Trudy had, because she had decided to do it and because the Holy Spirit had nothing to do with it, she had to pick out the tones. And she picked out a manifestation to go with the tongues to make them more convincing. So she's, da 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 And we're all like. She doesn't have the Holy Ghost anywhere near her right now, so she also, she had to pick out the tongues. She picked out a, a, a manifestation. She also had to pick out an interpretation because God wasn't saying nothing. So the interpretation was, Our Father, who art in heaven. 
So granddaddy stood up off the platform. This, the carpet was orange back then, you know. Stood up off the platform, come down there and said, Trudy, you're in the flesh. You're going to love this story. Say, come on, Noah. Trudy, you're in the flesh. She went, I know it. Give us this day our daily bread. Trudy, sit down. How do we know that that wasn't the Holy Spirit? All it did was call attention to her. How do you get that to stop in your church? I recommend going granddaddy mode. We love you. Sit down. If I had a dollar for how many times I've heard John Kilpatrick go, hold that right now, that's not the right time. I've also heard him let it go. But he uses discernment. Come on, come on. How do we know? It's the Holy Ghost moving in these altars. Come on. What's calling attention to Jesus? Let me put it to you like this. What was wrong with the young lady's message? Something was wrong with her message. You thought there was nothing wrong with it. She interrupted the preaching of God's word to say, these men are servants of the most high God. And you should listen. Listen to me. I've been in some Holy Ghost services and so have you. The Holy Ghost has never interrupted a meeting from God and endorsed anybody's ministry except for Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He's the only one that gets that. None of us get that treatment. Come on, somebody. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you ain't Jesus. Yes. Come on. So how do we know? The Holy Spirit will never call attention to a man, to a ministry, to what they're doing for the kingdom. Come on. That ain't the Holy Ghost. That's you. The Holy Spirit does not call attention to man. How do we know? Because Jesus told us. Jesus told us a lot of stuff about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's got an extensive job description. Let's do a rapid Holy Spirit Bible study. Everybody ready? Yes. If you got like 10 more minutes, we're going to get out of here. John 14, well, something like that anyway. Anyway, John 14, 16, and 17. Shut up. <laughs> Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. So we know the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, right? Yeah. Right? So the Holy Spirit is not involved in error, right? We just uh, watched a meeting with a young lady talking to angels in her service in front of everybody, acting like it was the Holy Ghost. How many know that ain't right? Paul said, you don't worship angels. You should read the book of Colossians. It's against what just happened on that video clip. I can't help it. It's got a lot of views on Facebook. This is the word of God. Come on, somebody. John 14, 26. The older I get, the more I appreciate this one. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance, praise God, all that I said to you. Wait, the Holy Spirit's going to do what? He's going to take this and bring it back he takes he takes everything jesus has said and brings it back have you ever been in a situation and you didn't even realize you'd memorized the scripture and it just comes out i didn't even know that was in there can i tell you it might not have been but the holy ghost provoked it right out of you because this is his job come on come on did you know that having the holy spirit the baptism of the holy spirit is not less than tongues but it's a lot more than tongues Come on, come on. This is what we're talking about, John 15, 26 through 16, verse 1. When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. What does the Holy Spirit preach? He will testify about me. This is Jesus talking. The message of the Holy Spirit is? Thank all three of you. The message of the Holy Spirit is? He will testify about me and you will testify also because you have been with me from the beginning. Wait a minute. The, I believe, I still believe tongues is the initial physical evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Say amen. amen. But the continual, on, that's the initial physical, the continual ongoing manifestation of the Holy Spirit is that you cannot find a way to shut up about Jesus. You're not going to keep him in here. You're taking him to Walmart. You're taking him to work. You're taking him to school. That You cannot confine him. That is evidence that you got the Holy Ghost. Not just tongues. Not less than tongues. More than tongues. 
Okay, and he said, I told you, these things I've spoken to you so that you may be kept from stumbling. See, offense, deception will take you to offense. I gotta keep going. Y'all okay? This is how we know where the Holy Spirit is. He's the one who testifies about Jesus. Jesus said, I, I got to hurry. John 16, uh, starting in verse 7, he said, But I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world. This is not at all seeker sensitive, just so you all know. He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. And concerning judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. He said, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. But he, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak. Oh my gosh, this is a golden key. He will not speak on his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me for he will tell Take of mine and disclose it to you. In the early church, one of the ways that they judged a prophetic word as true or false or error, one of the ways they judged it was no matter what you said and how good it sounded, if you didn't deliver it in humility, it wasn't the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost He's not God Jr. He's not a version of God. He is God Almighty, the third person of the Trinity. And yet he humbles himself to never speak on his own initiative. So if it struts like a peacock, I don't care how many followers it has. It's not the Holy Ghost. He's humble. Come on, come on. Can I... I'm almost done. Can I trick you into praying a prayer? Just be brave. You ready? Holy Spirit, make Jesus obvious in my life. Do it again. Holy Spirit, make Jesus obvious in my life. So I was... As I was studying this, I started praying that way because when I realized what the real Holy Spirit does, I realized that that's what he does. That's who he is. He's all about making Jesus obvious. So I said, Jesus, do that to me by your spirit. Make Jesus obvious in my life, Holy Ghost. And then he started doing it and it scared me to death. It scared me so bad. We came back from Malaysia and we were jet lagged and this was before Jeremiah was born. We only had Malachi, but we were staying up with my mom and dad and thank God they were playing with him because we didn't know what in the world time it was. We were fried. And we had to take care of some business this one afternoon. We were just trying to chug enough coffee to not pass out on somebody, right? And we get to this place of business, and I had to take Malachi to my Aunt Lydia, and Nathan goes into the place of business first. Drop Malachi off, come back to the place of business, and Nathan's coming out, and I'm going in, and Nathan said, when you get in there, this is a trippy prophetic gift to have. I'd love for you to identify which one this is because this is a weird one. Nathan knows when other people are getting a word. So he comes out there and he says, you're finna have a word for this woman. I'm like, I don't have a word for myself. I'm like, I'm so jet lagged, I'm not sure I'm saved right now. Like, but if you say so, because I've learned he's right. There's been several times he, when he says that to me, he's right. So I go in there, I'm talking to this lady, just kind of listening for the Holy Ghost. She says, I'm studying and I'm going to get my doctorate in divinity. I'm going to preach the gospel. And I said, well, that's wonderful. We start doing business, you know, whatever. She says, it's dead silent. We'd moved on. Little pleasantries were moved on. It's quiet. There is no lead up to what I'm about to say. It was super awkward. She made it all the way weird. We went to a level 10 straight away dead quiet in this room. The woman looks at me. She goes, I'm shacking up. Whoa. I went, what? <laughs> I'm like, am I having an out of body jet lag experience? Like what is happening right now? Cause I promise you, I didn't want to know. I mean like, I'm shacking up. I said, what? And she goes, yeah, I'm shacking up. I'm sleeping with my boyfriend right now. I'm sleeping with my fiance right now, but he's not the one that I was sleeping with last night. And he also is not my baby daddy, but I've been sleeping with him too. It took her less than 30 seconds to confess to sleeping with three men. Hello. And I'm like, 
I had just, by the way, before she said that, I had just told the Holy Spirit, this appointment is almost up. And if you got a word, you better go ahead and give it because I ain't going to make nothing up. <laughs> and her, she said, I'm shacking up. Well, and here we go. <laughs> We're cooking with peanut oil now. You know? She says this to me. She goes, yes, so the one I'm sleeping with, he's not my baby daddy and he's not my fiance. She confesses to three men. And she says this. She said, but I know before I preach this gospel, I'm going to have to get my life right. I know I can't get up and preach and be doing all of this. And I said, do you think? So let me tell you something, chick. The Bible says in the book of James that those of us who preach the gospel to people, that we are held to a higher level of accountability. I came to tell you today that if you don't get the sin out of your life, if you stand up to preach the word of God with active sin in your life like this, the wrath of the living God is going to come down on your head. You better remember that I told you that. There was the word. Y'all okay? I'm going, we get in the car. I'm like, what the heck was that? <laughs> we go to the mall. Nathan needed a watch battery. We're just trying to keep Malachi from destroying the jeweler's office. I'm trying to wrestle the child who is done being still. Praise God. Never had I been in this jewelry store. Grew up in Augusta. Never had been to this jewelry store. Just trying to get Nathan a battery for his watch. And keep my eyes from falling out from burning with jet lag. Like, it's just one of those days. Walk into the jewelry store. The guy behind the counter goes, I love to party. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the heck? Like, what is this? Do I have a white collar on my shirt? <laughs> I do not want to know. He said, I love the party. Man, me and my boys, we the ones, we are partying all night long. We the ones dancing on the tabletops. What do y'all do for a living? <laughs> Nobody understands worship leader. They think you're in a cult when you say that. So I said, we're missionary evangelists. I figured that covered all of it. He went, ooh. <laughs> He said, my mama used to tell us on Saturday night that no matter how hungover we were, we had to get up and drink black coffee and get a cold shower and go to the house of God on Sunday morning. I looked at Nathan and I said, we have got to get out of here. Like, <laughs> I said, do I look like a Catholic priest right now? What is happening? I heard the Holy Ghost. You asked me for this. Come on, come on, come on. We talked about the fake. We talked about deception. We talked about the real. We talked about the Holy Ghost. Say it one more time. Holy Spirit, make Jesus obvious in my life. Do it again. Holy Spirit, make Jesus obvious in my life. I will know we've got the revival that we've been praying for when we can say that Jesus has been made obvious outside of this room right here. Jesus made it very clear that the Holy Spirit is in the business of making Jesus obvious. I don't know about y'all, but I've been deceived. I've been straight up. Come on, lied to and bought it, hook, line, and sinker. How many can say that happened to you, right? So that's the first thing we're going to deal with right now because the enemy tries to work you over with shame because you tried to believe the best about somebody. You just saw 75% of the hands in the room went up. It, it's, there's nothing shameful about trying to believe the best out of somebody. And as we talk about discernment, I'd be remiss to not say, don't you be going around deciding that you are the personal Holy Spirit, high sheriff. You pray it, you don't say it. The Holy Spirit shows you something. You're not a bulletin board. Lila Terhune snatched me up about that a long time ago. Holy Spirit shows you something. You're not a bulletin board. He showed it to you to pray it. Pray it through. But we want to move into a place where we know who's who in the zoo, where we can see the python coming. That was just good southern for you. Come on. We want to see that python coming so that it does not cut off the flow of the blood. The Holy Spirit. We want to... We want Complete freedom in here. I had to drop that in here because the Lord waited a little bit this time. Sometimes when we're, I'm going to need that gavel, babe. 
Sometimes, most of the time when we fly into Arizona, honestly, sometimes I come over here, sometimes I'm over at Fresh Start. Almost every time I fly into Phoenix, the Holy Spirit speaks to me on initial descent. And the Lord didn't do it the other night. And I don't know if it was just because it was so late that I couldn't, my brain was jello. I don't know. He didn't do it. But he spoke to me while we were, while we were having our Fountain Gate retreat. And then elaborated on it this afternoon. Why did we have to talk about deception and the real Holy Spirit? Because of what God's doing. Now, listen, I didn't preach this because of something you went through. That's right. Although it's applicable. I'm sure. I preached this because of what God said he's doing in Arizona. So I saw, anybody nervous that I'm waving a gavel around right now? <laughs> I'm not going to hit you. I might hit Nathan, but I won't hit you, okay? But here's what, here's what the Lord said. I saw the desert, and I saw it. it all the things you see in the desert, it's dried. Everything looks shriveled up. All the desert vegetation that requires little to no water to even survive. It was, there was nothing that looked like life. And I saw the Lord standing there and he was laughing. He was tickled at himself. He was almost sneaky. Are y'all okay with that? And he said, look what I have done. And I saw under the surface, I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> under the desert, nowhere where people would have thought it, was a massive reservoir of water. And he, this is what he said. So this massive reservoir, and the Lord said, I have hidden the water right under the ground. Are y'all listening in here? There is a move of God that has been hidden in Arizona. It, and the enemy has not recognized it because the Lord hid this move under the surface. I feel, I feel the Holy Ghost. The Lord hid the move under the surface. God hid it under the surface. This is the golden key so that the ones who were thirsty would pursue it and have the thirst of their souls quenched. This is the part, this is why we had to preach this. But there is a counterfeit move happening at the same time. We're going to talk about it later because I saw a face. I'm not saying it on a mic. I saw a face. Okay. Believe me when I tell you, it ain't nobody affiliated with Fountain Gate or Vanguard. Smile, everybody. The Lord said there is a counterfeit move happening at the same time. And, and he said, I can see, I, I could see when, I, when he was showing me this, I could see a counterfeit prophet. There's just no nice way to say that, so we're just going to rip that Band-Aid off. A counterfeit prophet. She looked scorched. Like someone who's been exposed in the desert too long. Tattered clothes. And she was holding... Um, she wasn't digging for the water in the reservoir. She was holding one of those diviner sticks and scurrying to and fro. It's witching. It's witching. And, and, and there was no shovel in her hand. She wasn't digging for the water. The water's right there. It wasn't even that deep. It wasn't hidden that deep. A little effort, and but she was witching for that water. I don't believe it was just that person. I believe it was a sign of that movement, but it was that person as well. And I, know, I couldn't help but notice they weren't digging. Instead, they were using those diviner sticks, trying to find the water through the demonic and trying to sell it as the Holy Spirit. And I heard all who are thirsty come to the water and drink. Those who have paid a price to dig will be rewarded with revival, but the imposters will begin to drop off the map. So who has revival? It's the ones with the shovel. So I want everybody to stand. I want to... I know who's in this house. 
I know who's in this movement. We're the shovel people. Somebody say amen. amen. We are not going to, we're just going to make some decrees real quick. And then I, I don't know, we'll do whatever else next. But we're just going to make a decree tonight that that spirit of divination, that witching spirit that tries to shortcut its way into a move of God without paying a price. We're just going to make a declaration tonight, right now, that it will not advance in this house or in this movement. We call it to halt in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. And we decree that the water is just under the surface. So we say God is opening up the reservoir in Arizona. The fountains of the deep are opening up. Somebody say amen. amen. We decree it in Jesus' name. Amen. 